All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. I'm actually in my car pulling out of my garage. Uh, I got to go meet my daughter to go see the movie Us. And um, a lot of times I don't have time to do these podcasts, so I do them in the car when I travel. I never have done one actually locally. Uh, but I'm going to give it a shot. Hopefully the audio isn't too screwed up or too loud. I'm in a coupe. Uh, so it's kind of like a sports car, I guess. It kind of may have a little louder uh, thing going. But anyways, what I want to get into today is do you have a eating disorder? And uh, I don't mean that in the sense where it's always just about losing weight. Um, it's also about gaining weight. And I think usually when we talk eating disorders, a lot of times people only talk about um, losing weight. Uh, anorexism and things of that nature. And I've, I don't know if you've ever listened to my podcast in the past, but I call it reverse anorexism. It's just my terminology. Uh, I had that for many, many years. And basically what that is, I had a lot of insecurities growing up thinking I was always small. And no matter how big I got, I always felt like a twig, uh, a torp, um, whatever you want to call me. I've discussed this before. And I just actually, two things happened this weekend that kind of brought it up. I was just watching uh, HBO I love that HBO Sports with Brian Gumble, and they had guys that had eating disorders as far as starvation goes um, regarding sports. So a lot of athletes, they lose weight, and they keep losing weight, and they want to get fitter, and they become obsessed with eating correctly and losing weight, and then before you know it, they basically have anorexism, and it's not just about jockeys on horses. This is going for a lot of athletes out there trying to be perfection, I guess you could say, to a certain degree. And then even if they're not, uh, they don't end up at a professional sport or even after college or high school, they just evolve into these eating disorders. So I know some people like that, but I'm going to go the other way and talk about what I went through as far as an eating disorder, which is I always felt like I had to eat because I wrestled for many years and it was always about losing weight and that started to even aggravate me. And even in high school, I was like, uh, I graduated 135 pounds And then I got offered some small mini scholarships to some bullshit schools and I had absolutely no interest where some of my friends went on the wrestle and basically it was to be at like certain weight classes. So they'll be like, oh, you could be 138 or 145 if you come here. And I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? I want to be 220 pounds and I want to be a monster. Why would I want to be a, you know what I mean? Like get into a certain weight class. And I think a lot of wrestlers, boxers and people in general, they lock into these weight classes where they starve themselves and they stunt their growth. It's a reality. And the one thing I didn't like about wrestling to a certain degree too is like I just want to keep eating and lifting throughout the year. So they kind of want to classify you and say, okay, you're 126, you're 132, you're 130 and kind of lock you in these. You're better off going a lesser weight, not a heavier weight. I want to keep gaining weight and getting bigger, but they'd get huffy puffy regardless if I could beat them in the upper weight or down. They wanted to lock me into a certain weight category, which I despised. And I don't understand if you're good at something. I believe if you're great at something, you could be great at it in any weight. That's my theory. That doesn't mean out of shape weight. But what I'm saying is I see guys that used to box at 175 pounds and drop to 132 or 135. I'd be like, because I guess that's their boxing weight. I'm not down with that shit. Maybe you're faster. Maybe you're stronger. I don't know what the theory is. Uh, you still have the power of a 175 pounder. Or you're, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm not down with that. If you're great, I believe, and in shape, I would want to compete at the weight um, that I feel most comfortable and, you know, have the most strength in. I, anytime I, for years I cut weight because the coaches or this one or to help somebody else fit in or. I felt fucking miserable. I felt weak. I felt tired. I felt sick. There was no, and then when I went and did summer tournaments, I would literally start destroying people because I'd finally be able to eat. You know, I had better strength. And I think because I was honestly sleeping in in the summers better than during the school year. So I had that going for me. But um, <clears throat> sorry about these bumpy roads. But yeah. Back to, um, so today I saw a special eye on this poor kid. He was 50-something pounds. He passed away. He had anorexia. And that kind of blows me away, starvation. But I can relate to one thing. When I was wrestling, I think it was my freshman and sophomore year, I kept losing weight and losing weight. And I kept winning. And they wanted me to get down to this one weight class. I felt sick. But what happened was I started to program my brain where if I gained any weight, I felt like I was letting the team down. I felt like I was letting myself down. So it becomes, I I could see where that takes a toll on you from an athlete standpoint. 
And after I got sick, I, I think I, I dropped down. I normally wrestled like 126 that year, 132, and I went down to 119. And I was a really thin kid to begin with. I think I caught the flu, but I went to weigh in. I was like 115 or something, 114. And I was like, oh my God, this is horrible my junior year. After that, I said, and I threw up walking off the mat. I was just sick to my stomach. But after that, I said, I'm going to get bigger and stronger. But I still, uh, I didn't plan on actually maybe not even wrestling. We went to a banquet and they made me captain. I was a captain, which was really cool. But I was going back and forth to Florida. I was debating on doing my senior year in Florida. And then uh, maybe not even wrestling. I just wanted to lift weights and get big. I really wasn't, I kind of was exhausted from sports. I played tennis my whole life, wrestled, played soccer, football, even sports like floor hockey and things in that nature, swimming constantly, weightlifting, racquetball, handball. I was just tired, man, from, you know, just, I think it was running more or less than anything. I just got exhausted from running and I had all these like weird issues as a younger man because I played, I think, too many sports, didn't get enough rest, wasn't eating correctly. But to make a long story short, I was just in a sauna um, yesterday and I was sitting and a lot of times saunas are two tiers and you can look down and uh, whatever I am 200 pounds skinnier you know younger guy came in and sat like right underneath me to the left of me actually but his arm was there and my arm is here and I always have an issue thinking no matter how big I am still to this day I still feel like my arms are very very thin and I looked down at my arm and I looked down at his arm and he was probably 145 pounds I'm not gonna lie obviously he was a lot thinner than I was but when I was compare, I was just looking at him, just looking down at his arm real quick. I just caught a glance of it, his arm, and I looked at my arm. And he kind of reminded me of when I was younger and I wrestled, uh, but he was older than that. But that body frame, I'm like, wow, that's what I used to look like. I remember that this weight class. And when I looked at my arm and his arm, they looked identical to me. And I'm like, am I fooling? Like, is this an illusion? Is, is my brain that fucked up where I know my arm is much bigger than his because even when we're leaving in the locker room, I'm just a lot bigger. But in my mind, I feel still like my body is actually almost is his size or smaller. I kept looking and just comparing going, wow, yeah, we got similar arms. And not long ago, I might be crazy because I was looking at my daughter's calves and my calves and I people always talk about how big my calves are and things and I don't see it and I'm like yeah my calves are pretty similar to my daughter Demi's and size and, and then my girlfriend said are you mentally ill your daughter your daughter's not you don't even realize how your the comparison is so far off but I think when I look at her little calves because she's skinny and she's only probably about 119 pounds that's what I imagine them looking like which is crazy in itself but that's Again, I think a mental issue I have. And all of this, I think, for me, stems back to an eating disorder. And I think a lot of people have eating disorders. They not be as extreme as mine where I had to constantly be eating because I felt the opposite of an anorexic. Because if anorexia is, I think, I never, I think I kind of may have had a form of understanding it, not having it as a disease. That's ridiculous. I got two biker dudes. Oh, they're yelling at each other. Nice. Anyways. I'm in Orlando, Florida. I'm on a road called Kirkman, and people get nuts over here. But what I do like is these motorcycle guys, because I love motorcycles. There they go. yee Anyways, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So anorexiaism, where when you eat food, um, you know, everything going in, you kind of, I think, feel like, oh, my God, I'm gaining weight, or it's going to make me fat, or it's going to do this or that. I was on the opposite end of the spectrum, where if I wasn't constantly eating, I was getting smaller and weaker. And that could even go going to the toilet, taking a dump or whatever. You're like, oh my God, I just took a dump for, you know, two pounds or whatever you're thinking in your head. I got to get that back in me, not the dump, but food, nutrition. Because it's kind of like, what I looked at it is like, is I wanted to be a big, you know, like you have a car and you kind of could put gas in it or whatever. I want to be a goddamn semi truck. That's what I was thinking. You need, in my mind, I was like, you got to put more fuel in this thing, more oil, more everything to become something much bigger than you are to haul this body around. Um... So that's how I looked at it. And that's kind of my illness with that. But back to what was my point with that, I think a lot of people have certain types of disorders, especially when working out. I think a lot of times they think, hey, 
I'm working out now. If I, it's it's basically aim for perfection, and I understand because my slogan to a certain degree is, if you don't aim for perfection, you'll never come close. But when I say that, it doesn't mean that you are gonna, you know, you have to be perfect because I don't believe anything or anyone is perfect. I don't care what it is. There's always something that can be improved on or something that can be done to make it better. I don't care what it is. You may think, oh my God, this is the best. Well, in time, most likely, it's not the best. The record's always being broken. I don't care if you think this is the best car ever built, this is the best airplane ever built, this. Somebody creates something that's usually better. So is there's no such thing, I believe, as perfection. Um, but when it comes to disorders, back to eating, working out, fitness, because I'm kind of throwing this all in. Don't. I'm just telling people, don't get obsessed on really anything in life to a certain degree where it really takes over your body and your mind. I do have that issue, but I'm smart. I always said I'm smart enough to realize how stupid I am. Which sounds ridiculous, but I know that I have these issues and I can kind of control them and maintain them. I will say though, when I was really obsessed with getting big, my mother, my mother used to actually put me in a place here, glutton because I wouldn't stop eating or I wouldn't start, you know, I, I had issues obviously, but I was, you know, I still kind of knew where I stood but I had a couple situations where I was like, holy shit, now you got to back up, you know, back off. Even when I used to love to gamble, I'd be like, all right, now you fucked up, back up, back up. I never went over the deep edge um, like a lot of people do. But I do know a lot of people that do have disorders. And it's even weird disorders regarding working out too, not just weight. Uh, drinking disorders, which I find quite interesting, is a lot of people I know that work out hard, drink hard. And I think that's a huge stat. Statistically, more, a lot of people that drink work out. That doesn't mean all of them. Don't throw me in that category. But it's not like a lot of people who work out don't smoke. You know, that's not a lot of, you know, it's not the truth. But a lot of people work out hard. They party hard. That goes for, I used to know a lot of professional bodybuilders. They drank, party, did drugs, coke, blow, steroid. I mean, you name it, they did it. I used to say, I think because if you could, I could never shoot a needle in my body. I can't take pills. I I just, the Flintstone vitamins about as far as I go, but. These guys, I'm like, well, if they can inject themselves with steroids, they're obviously not afraid of needles. If they could pop pills, steroids, or whatever type of pill, then they'll have no problem doing anything else, I think, and drinking is just drinking. But be very careful with, you know, your disorders because sometimes, too, when you try to, can, you think you have control over a certain disorder and saying, hey, I only drink on weekends, I work out really hard all week, and I get to, you know, drink on weekends, that's my pleasure, I drink the reason I work out is because I want to drink. And I kind of live that lifestyle with food. I've said it for years. People always ask me, how do you eat pasta every day? How do you eat Italian food constantly and you're still in this certain type of shape? I'm like, because I work my ass off in the gym. So for me to put an hour and a half every day, four or five days a week, it offsets it for me. And it works right now with my metabolism. Will it always work? I don't know. But I think a lot of people who drink a lot, I'm not saying they're alcoholics, but they like to drink, you know, their wine every night or their, you know, on weekends party. They work out for that reason. I'm not against that. You could do whatever the hell you want to do. Just make sure because I think a lot of times people end up quitting working out and they keep the drinking going or they work out, but they kind of are functioning alcoholics. So just kind of watch yourself because I know a lot of those type of people. And um, so... Anyways, I didn't want to get long-winded on this one. But, yeah, really pay attention to your eating process. Uh, Because I think, too, a lot of times, and I talk about this with uh, people I know that I try to help. A lot of people eat very, and I do this sometimes, too. Their schedules change or they're always changing their eating patterns. They don't even realize it. So sometimes they'll eat breakfast and then they'll skip lunch and do dinner. Or sometimes they'll skip breakfast and do a lunch and dinner. And then next time they'll do... Um, you know, like a, a smoothie for breakfast, skip lunch and do a light dinner or, and if you think about it, sometimes they'll do a breakfast, lunch, skip dinner, just do drinks and some apps or something, but then look at the next day by the time they eat again, if you skip a dinner hypothetically at 6 p.m. or 7 and say you the next day you, you may not even eat breakfast again, you know, that's a 12-hour swing without any nutrition. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. I think they kind of realize it, but they don't. But a lot of people, I think, too, don't realize they'll, like, say you have breakfast at 7, you'll have lunch at noon, and then 6, you eat dinner, hypothetically. You crammed a certain amount of food there, and like I just told you, from 6 all the way till the next day you eat breakfast, that's a long time without any food, which I, if you're if you're geared that way, wonderful, but you may want to get some more nutrition in your body at night or uh, something healthy. 
later, but definitely I think skipping breakfast sometimes. Um, and I'm not saying you have to have a huge breakfast. Uh, you know, I know the European way with a lot of the Italians, uh, at least that I was surrounded by. They don't do breakfast. They do, you know, cappuccino. And they do a little, sometimes they even throw a biscotti in there. They'll do, you know, like, you know, they'll do a croissant or they do a little, whatever they do, something very light. Um, something with bread a lot of times could be even toast or whatever it is that they have. But it's more, I think, coffee driven, to be honest with you, than it is food driven. Sometimes they'll do scrambled eggs, the Italian, you know, whatever they do, little hard boiled eggs or something. And, um, but yeah, you really want to make sure you're getting the proper amount of nutrition. And I just saw on that sports show too, is like these guys who went into Antarctic to really go, the two guys went after it to go across the entire Antarctic and how they, had to study their body and realize that, you know, they could not lack any nutrition or literally they would die. So they had to know the exact intake of calories that was coming in, what they were burning, or have some type of idea, which is quite amazing to me. I would never go that far. And I'm not out to, like, make perfect meals or have perf- any of that shit. Even, you know, with protein and all these type of things. I'm That's just not my thing. And if it is for you, more power to you. But... The one thing I will say is just try to really pay attention to your intake as far as, you know, vegetables go. And obviously, I look at it as just chicken or steak or something simple. Really make sure you're getting the proper amount of that because you just don't want to be weak. Treat your body with the utmost respect. A lot of juices. Get those veggies in you, those fruits. Don't don't take it for granted, you know, and even calcium try to get it in there you just really got to try to your body a lot of times i think what i've gone through it talks to you and it's your body your brain everything is saying hey i feel like shit sit back and say why or like why am i always tired and i think a lot of people think oh i'm tired because i'm working too hard or i'm tired because i'm sick now or, i'm tired because... a lot of times it is your nutrition and you may have a disorder where again you're not getting enough nutrition you're you you think by you know, a lot of people I know are obsessed with coffee and they're kind of obsessed with wine, especially when I lived in California and even in Florida, a lot of different things are very interesting. Wherever I live in Chicago, they eat differently. Just pay attention. All right. All right. I'm on a real loud road here. I four. I don't know if you know anything about Florida. It's a beast. A lot of traffic. It gets nuts. So if you come to Orlando, Florida, you're going to most likely probably have to hit I four. Try to take the expressways east, west, beeline, turnpike, um, yeah, you definitely want to take those roads if you can. Just try to stay off the side four. They're doing construction downtown. It's a mess. Why the hell am I even telling you this? But that's what I do. I got, I guess, ADD or ADHD. I don't know what the hell they even talk about. I don't even know what the hell I got. But I hope some of this information helped you and be honest with yourself. I'm going to do some other stuff with this, but um, really be realistic with your approach to your diet. And also don't you know, don't get nuts and don't make yourself crazy that you're thinking you're not getting enough or you're not, you're, you're not doing enough all the time, regardless if it's food, working out, work, whatever. It, it just could, it drives you mad, right? Just learn to try to get a balance in your life. I've always lived in a world of extremes and I'm trying to get into the middle a little bit because either I was, you know, just so far one way or so far another. And uh, I guess that's just the way it works out for me, but it doesn't have to be that way. So, all right. If you get a chance, check out my YouTube channel, Rich Chalenza. Uh, and then I have, obviously, this podcast, The Rich Chalenza Show, WTF, are you talking about? I'm on YouTube. I just said that. Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. And, uh, yeah, I never I never edit my podcast. I just want to always be as authentic as possible, just let it riff out of me. And pretty soon I'm going to be interviewing and uh, doing a bunch of other things. But right now I just don't have time. So I try to express things that I think would help people and kind of let you know what I went through to let you know I'm not, you're not alone because you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of problems or a lot of knowledge out there that you may be seeking that nobody takes the time to give to you. And I think a lot of times, including me, I like, you, you know, you listen to all these different people, public speakers. I'm like, you know what? Some I love, but after, including me, after a while, I probably sound redundant because we go over the same things because we only live one life. So you'd be like, Jesus Christ, Rich, we get it, fitness. All right, we get it. You had a, you know, reverse anorexia. We fucking get it. You, you know, you grew up in a nightclub, hypothetically, or whatever the, the, the pitch is. But yeah, try to learn bits and pieces uh, from everybody. All right? All right, that's all I got for you. If you're traveling, safe travels, and I wish you nothing but the best.